I am happy to dream, to wonder at fantasy of ifs and might have beens, of rendezvous, of trysts, of names and faces I'll soon forget. Small hours of pillow talk, long nights of tenderness, each possibility in its own time might have been as real as this. But do not mourn an ache, it's steps not taken, paths not wondered. Instead, kindle again that hopeful flame. 9.09 a.m., October 10th, 2021. I was very hungover when I wrote that this morning. And this isn't so much poetry time, but you know what? For that will we'll get me back. We'll get me back. I'll emote a little bit. Have a face. Have some sort of emotional reaction and connection. I, truth be told, I'm fucking exhausted. I'm fucking exhausted. I uh, am emotionally drained. Like, I there have been some very high highs this weekend. Been some pretty low lows. Mostly highs. Mostly highs. And I guess we'll get into some specificity after uh, after this bit. But if I, if I look and sound like I'm fucking tired, it's because I'm fucking tired. Let's see here. <clears throat> I felt so much compersion at the wedding and the day surrounding it. Compersion with, with moments of sharp recollection, sharp reminders. I was so moved by the abundance of love given loudly and proudly to the married couple. The, the bride's community were <laughs> absolutely explosive in their affections, in their joy. And I won't lie, I, um, I was absolutely charmed by the bride's party. Uh, maybe specific members of the bridal party. And I crush quite a bit. Me? Having feelings? Crazy, I don't do that all the time. <laughs> my time though I mostly frequented with familiar faces and that's where the sharpness comes into play there are there are some people some behaviors some lifestyles that I have behind me with vigorous intent vigorous intent to be reacquainted reminded and at times bombarded with this bitter familiarity made me want to recoil to withdraw with, with fangs bared, to push back, and scream out. I, I don't want your your dependence, your your desperation, your drowning hands grasping and groping for purchase. No, I. I want to be soft and kind and loving and vulnerable 
and open and honest and excited and enthusiastic and and, and I started to hide instead. Started to hold back instead. Bite my tongue instead, politely and nervously, keep my distance. Not wanting to intrude, to burden, to misstep. I hope that I didn't misstep. Or at least not badly. I worry that I did. Maybe a bad job at supporting my beloved friend who got married. At showing my <laughs> absolutely fawning excitement uh, and infatuation with some of the beautiful, incredible people I got to just briefly meet. It, it was a few days, but God, it, it goes by so fast. Especially when they're it's a rehearsal, you meet a bunch of people, immediately forget their names. Next day, see them again, immediately forget their names. Then that next day, you also see like 100 or 200 other people who you have to remember or try to remember. And then you see them at the wedding the next day, and it's just a lot of fucking people. I'm really bad with names. Great with faces. I can look at someone and go like, oh yeah, you're really cute, or you're cool, or you told that interesting story, or like, we we had a connection. I don't know your name. And I don't want to be that asshole, right? I am that asshole. You're finding excitement to beautiful people. It being who I want to be. Right, failing to be who I want to be, who who I am, or at least who I'm trying to be, rather than who I was. And I hope in that, in self-actualizing, I did okay. <laughs> I skipped ahead with the names. Here I go bitching about it. I really, really suck with names. I forget, and then panic, and then sit quietly instead of blurting out <laughs> questions like, I love your tattoos, what does that one say, or mean, or just, I don't know. Uh, daydreamy sigh, absolutely daydreamy sigh. I, I talked with uh, an old uh, friend and a friend of theirs at the after party of the wedding. I walked up on them and they were talking about like who they thought the five hottest people were. And <laughs> both of them are uh, mostly straight ladies. So it was mostly guys that no, but there, there were a lot of very cute people there. Very pretty people there. Turns out, you know, birds of a feather. Also, like, a lot of people have sexy qualities and attractive qualities. It takes a little bit of confidence. A little bit of confidence to make your sexiness go up by, like, 200%. Just, just like, a little bit of that. Bam. So much better. So much better. And, well, you know, um, there being tequila and whiskey at the bar, well, that helps. Being dressed up kind of schmancy, that helps. But yeah, I, you know, a lot of people were uh, looking, maybe not their best, but looking pretty good. I certainly wasn't. That Arizona wind was fucking my hair up, and I had my fucking hands up here all the time trying to fix it. I'm an indoor kind of kid. This is not outdoor hair. You know, you don't get skin this pale by not being a fucking vampire. I, I don't know. I, I wish... I'd said so many things and made so many connections that I hadn't in specific moments and overwhelmingly felt this, this urgent knee jerk to be this spiky friction thing. 
that I can become there. And that I often become when I, uh... I don't feel safe. It's a, it's a facade. <laughs> I wish that I felt more safe being soft. This wedding was a gift. Drowning in that compersion felt like finally breathing. 4.45 p.m. And... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I had a lot of time, obviously, uh, to think while on the plane, but I'm also fucking exhausted. I, I had some interactions, and I texted my older sister about this, because these interactions and the way I didn't meet my own expectations made me change some plans later in the year. Um, I, I hate Prescott, Arizona. Prescott, Arizona. I hate it. Getting around is incredibly difficult unless you drive. And if you're drinking, you shouldn't be driving. But then how are you going to get around? There are no, absolutely no buses. There are like three Uber and Lyft total drivers in the city. I met like 90% of them. Three is an exaggeration, but it is less than 10. Cab companies stop at like 11. Uh, the town is very conservative. Very conservative. Um, I didn't have like any of my vaguely leftist paraphernalia on display not any of my favorite fucking clothes like my useless queer energy shirt or like any any of the stuff that i didn't dress like i do here like i had a choker on but i had button-up shirts every fucking day because i wanted to look like vaguely formal too but like black jeans which what i wear most of the time but i have i have a huge collection of leggings and tights that i look very good in as some instagram and twitter posts can attest i i have dresses i look pretty fucking good in and i you know i i had given thought to you know it could be fun to put on makeup or wear some more of this unapologetically not cis, not het stuff, but like, <sighs> I don't know, man. I, I didn't want to honestly put myself at unnecessary risk. Um, it, while there was some measure of control over like who was going to the wedding, the wedding was in the center of downtown, at the center of this podunk, bullshit, do nothing, retirement cowboy community their historic bar district full of sketchy ass garbage ass country bars um see so yeah a lot of people who i mean looked at me weird because i have a puff of hair instead of looking like a fucking mormon god forbid i'd be out there with the have the shit I wear and say and do, and I... I was so quiet this weekend, so fucking quiet in how I dressed, is what I'm describing. I was hiding. I was hiding behind this, this tough, bullshit, pseudo-masculine veneer of looking handsome, looking formal, doing this garbage accoutrement that's been copied over and over and over for hundreds of years because the British have no taste for fashion and Americans can't really ever innovate. And, and it wasn't just, you know, clothes, but the clothes I felt, particularly because I had to choose between a lot of clothes I like and, like, I had fishnets on, but, of course, with the pants I had, you couldn't really tell. 
and like I would unbutton a f couple of buttons to show off my tattoo and be like, you know, not not the God fearing type uh, that some people there uh, uh, dress to the T for, and I just I don't fucking know. Like there there was so much. leftness so much p socialist I had to put back in the bag so much queerness I had to put in the bag I really did not appreciate that what what made it worse is the the husband very 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 good friend of mine told me that he'd enjoy it or find it funny if I started political conversations and fights and what what he wanted from me and I kind of let him down in this is to be myself just unapologetically be myself but the fucking moment I was with the groom's party uh, another mutual friend and I started talking about politics it was like mm, well you know I don't think this is the place for politics like just trying to do the we're at a party and make sure everyone's having a good time and we don't talk about money, we don't talk about politics, we don't talk about race, we don't talk about the fucking collapse of our capitalist regime. We, we don't talk about the real world. We don't meaningfully connect with each other as real human beings. We talk about stupid superficial stuff. We, we bring up stories that are halfway correct about how we know certain people and then we embellish on them to make them seem more interesting. That's what we fucking do? That's, that's how we're connecting here? No. No. Fuck you. Just let me be me. And I should have pushed back harder, but I, I have damn near, you know, half a decade of being so conditioned by the friend circles I used to have in that bullshit podunk town was, <sighs> I, I was so used to being insecure and worried that I was too much, right? That I was too loud too obnoxious, too political, too leftist, too queer, too weird, too romantic, too poetic, too whatever the fuck. And so I would take cues from these more traditionally social people or traditionally popular people as to when I should shut the fuck up or follow their lead or whatever. And it wasn't healthy for me then, it didn't actually help me then, and it sure shit didn't help me this weekend being around people who thought that they could still exercise that kind of social <laughs> maneuver with me, and instead I'd push back on it. A great example of this is at the end of the night at the wedding, there's two people dancing, both I know, one is a friend of mine, one is a friend of a friend, let's say. He's... He shouldn't be drinking. Let's let's put it that way. He shouldn't be drinking. Uh, he grabbed my wrist so as to pull me into dance. I leaned in and said no. He pulled my wrist harder. I stepped closer to him and said no. He pulled harder a third time, and I damn near decked him. Now, I'm not just some random asshole at the wedding. I'm a part of the groom's party. I'm a groomsman. I, I kind of stand out. I'm not about to start fight in the middle of the dance floor so instead I pull him closer say no and push him away and then the motherfucker kept coming up to me trying to hug me that night and today being like oh hey Alex like being like oh I think Alex is mad at me man why would I do that like you have uh, no no real concept of consent and you never really did, and you're still living like you're 20 years old and a dumbass college student. And it's not just like these two examples, it's every fucking one. They are just codependent messes. My, my friend who got married is an incredibly empathic, kind, communicative, intelligent, emotionally sensitive, and insightful person. People who need help and support and insight flock to him, let's hit the mic, like, you know, 
insert desperate thing to insert analogy here. Again, I'm fucking tired. So there's a lot of few people who are like, oh, Alex, I've heard so much about you. Like, I'm so excited to meet you. I'm like, I haven't heard a goddamn thing about you. <laughs> I didn't say that, obviously, but I, I got the feeling that they weren't really interested in me. That they were more interested in how I served as a, a vector or an avenue for how they could access the, uh, the groom. Right? I, I was a social avenue. I don't know, maybe that's cynical, and it's probably cynical, but it might be true. Made me uncomfortable. People who, like, I've intentionally cut ties with, acting like we're really good friends. No, dude, you're really washed up and you have substance abuse problems and you don't respect boundaries and, like, you made me a worse person and... One of my best friends in the world who's getting married, like, barely survived the downward spiral that you happily co-signed. I don't fucking like you. Like, <laughs> if I had my say, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, what, what I've heard, what apparently they've heard is like, um, I... I <sighs> So it's good and bad, right? Like, some things they've heard, like, I'm creative and the poetry stuff and things I, you know, I'm pretty proud of. And then, like, also, I can be a real asshole and cynical and take control to party and, like, really fucking lock down. But a red flag that happened the, the first night. First night? Sure, whatever. First night. Uh, we had all gone to a bar. Very great bar. Very cheap. Um drank a lot then there was an after party you know it was the night before the wedding so the bride and the groom doing the, the traditional bullshit thing went their separate ways before midnight i was with the groom's party um we went back when we were supposed to go back to this airbnb and there were two people playing magic there and uh that was not the speed of the people I was with, to put it politely, nor is it my speed. So instead, we just went bar hopping and came back later. And when we came back later, people were just, like, shitty drunk playing Cards Against Humanity. And when I say shitty drunk, I mean, like, college shitty drunk. Like, uh, the cousin of the groom is, like, damn near being fondled by, like, a good old friend of his in the corner. I'm like... You're adults. Just go fucking bang. Just leave. Go bang. What are you doing? Why are you, why are you just like, I don't know, man. Feels weird. Uh, and like, there's like various degrees of social awkwardness and I'm probably drunker than everyone else. So what I do is I take control of the table. I come in and when people are talking over the person reading the card, I can be very loud and I shut them down and I made the game start moving because I run things well. <laughs> I'm good at running parties. I'm good at running games. And then, you know, it was my turn and I was riffing on the, the cards I've been dealt, right? And it, it wasn't like, I don't know, it, it was shitty Alex. It was mean shitty Alex. Um... And, like, two or three people were like, oh, hell yeah, we've heard about this, Alex. I was excited to get to see this. I'm like, ah, uh, uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go because, one, you you mentioning that I'm doing this makes me realize I'm doing this. And I don't, I don't want to be, like, mm, cynical asshole Alex. I want to be, like, sweet, <laughs> open... Not, uh, not compensating for insecurity, Alex. And I'm doing that here, and I don't like it. It doesn't help that these Airbnbs where all these people were staying were neighborhoods I used to get blackout drunk in and stumble home when I was in college. So it just felt like being trapped in 10 years ago in the worst way possible. And I I'm being very negative. But, but like, the, the compersion that I talked about, like, 
the the bride's party, her friends and family were incredible, incredible. They're Midwesterners uh, from a little further north than I'm from. They act like it. Uh, they're loud. They're very loud. <laughs> I've been to I've been to a few weddings, quite a few weddings, and I'm so used to people like politely clapping, one person going like woo or whatever, some drunk asshole in the back, right? It was her entire fucking family. All of her friends just like making complete asses out of themselves. Not in a I wanna take the stage kind of way, but in a fuck yeah, that's my baby, that's my girl, she's fucking awesome kind of way. I would, I, it's so silly. I was so deeply moved by it. I was, I, uh, I was like tearing up most of the night. I, I, you know, was crying outright in parts of the ceremony, but like, fuck, I miss that. I want that. And I, I recognize I've never really had that. And there's a bit of like, you know, sadness in that but it's beautiful to see it is so so nice to see i gotta say though the grooms have uh had a lot of those people i know had a lot of those people who i have reservations about who were maybe not on their best behavior who were a bit awkward or weird or problematic and Ah, it's a weird balance. I'm so happy that I never have to go back there again. I'm so happy that they never have to go back there again. Hopefully. I... What's been weirding me out... There is one person that was there that I really trust to tell me if I was out of line at any point. And that was the groom. And I'm not going to go to the groom being like... Hey, I'm feeling insecure when you're getting married and you're busy and you're trying to connect with hundreds of people. Nah, dog, I'm just going to be like, well, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this and decompress this and tease this apart later. Uh, but like, I don't fucking trust anyone I'm around to actually have a good read on who I am, uh, who I am trying to be, and who I was, and where the lines are there. Instead, there's like... person I haven't seen in six years, one of the first things is like, hey, you want mushrooms? I'm like, man, you knew a very different version of me. Uh, kinda, but like, this is my best friend's wedding night. No, I'm not here to get fucked up. I'm here to make sure he has a good time. Like, the amount of people just like drinking to get drunk or drinking to get fucked up, or even hooking up. Like, like I mentioned earlier, there were people I were crushing on, but I felt bad if I stuck with, like, one or two people for too long. So I, I'd move around and, and, like, try and engage with people because it's a wedding. It's a wedding. It's what you do. What you do, you want everybody to have a good time. We're not a bunch of kids trying to get our dick sucked at pram! Right? We're, we're adults trying to celebrate the, the beautiful union and commitment that two people have made with one another and the incredible outpouring of love that their communities are manifesting here. That That's what we're here for. Not to be like, mm, I'm tired. Like, like <clears throat> I, I don't know. I don't know. Like... Maybe, maybe I'm the asshole. And by that, I mean, I know I'm the asshole, right? I, I know I am. I know I'm just um, pissing on people's parades, uh, yucking people's yum, etc., etc. It's what I do. It's what I do. <sighs> yeah. It, it was good. On the whole, it was good. But it... On the plane, I was thinking a lot about, like, the boundaries I have that are important to me that a lot of people were stepping on and pushing and took for granted that I would buckle. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, we don't do that here. We, we, we don't do that anymore. Oh, Alex, I have too much to drink. You should help me. Pour it out, dog. Like, 
I'm not here to get fucked up because you're fucked up. I'm not here to follow your social cues. I'm not here to make you look cooler by being around you. And also, if you tell a story involving me and something I did and take credit for you, take credit for it, I'm just going to cut you off and call you a liar in front of the entire wedding party. So maybe just don't fucking do that. <laughs> the Midwesterners love me. All right. Cat, uh, the, the, the wife's family. I'm trying not to use the name. The wife's family. They seem to like me. I didn't talk with them much. But, you, you know, corn recognizes corn. <laughs> I think. <sighs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. But, like I said, uh, made me rethink some things about uh, December. My dad reached out a couple of weeks ago asking my older sister and I if we wanted to get together for, like, a little family Christmas thing. Mm, no, uh, my initial reaction was no, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to spend money to travel. Um, you can be a shitty drunk. Also, like, uh, you were pretty rude to me and my partner the last time you were here. And I didn't feel comfortable making a point out of it, but, like, you, you soured me to the experience. So my, my gut reaction was no. Then I talked with my sister, and she had the same apprehensions, and, and I'd really like to see her, and her husband, who I love. He's a very old friend of mine. It's been, you know, a hot minute since we were... <laughs> since we was blood, since we were thick as thieves, but still, love the guy. So, you know, I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. And I, uh talk to my dad and he's like oh I wanna don't worry about paying for flying out to see your sister I'll pay for that in the hotel and like you can stay with me and I'm like Ooh, no 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 <laughs> we're gonna back the fuck up here you pay for nothing for me because you were not a supportive father for me growing up you were physically and emotionally abusive and distant you let me down on many, many occasions. I appreciate what you're trying to do is give. But I don't trust you. I have love for you, but I don't trust you. And I've seen you drink and get drunk in recent years. And I don't want to be stuck with that. Not that he's, like, particularly bad. He's just fucking obnoxious. So I'm like, yeah, I'll... I'll pay, Dad. Like, San Francisco's not far away. I can do that. Now I'm like, you know what? No, I don't fucking want to go to San Francisco. So I texted my sister like, hey, I'd be a lot more confident here. Can we just do this? So, like, if I have to kick Dad out or be like, hey, I'm done. Bye. I can just go home. She's like, yeah, I totally understand. Like, oh, sweet, sweet. Because I, I don't want to be in a position where I feel like I did this weekend, obligated to put on niceties and politeness just to keep the ball rolling. No, that's not... That's not who I am. It's not who I am. Uh, if there's a problem, I'm going to say there's a fucking problem. And I... I got mad thinking about this on the plane because when, when people kind of nudge me like, Alex, you know, being a bit much right now. Maybe don't talk about this kind of stuff I'm like oh you know maybe they're right no fuck you you're wrong <laughs> you're wrong like I can tell and I can see me just fucking light up when I talk about things that matter to me that matter generally I'm not going to be like, what do you do for work? How do you know the bride? How do you know the groom? Have you ever visited Arizona before? Wow, that's really interesting. Or, like, make jokes at the expense of the groom. Come on, dude, we're like 30 now. We should have outgrown that shit. Like, just... Openly give each other love. Just say that you really love and admire the person 
and you appreciate them and value them in your life instead of going like, ho, 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 here's a little jab. Like, I know it's scary having feelings, but it just can have feelings. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I was so happy to be back in Seattle. Oh my god, I, I almost cried when the plane touched down. It's 40 degrees and drizzling outside. I'm like, yes! Yes! Thank god I'm home! <laughs> I came in uh, right around midnight, so the uh, the light rail didn't make it past the stadium. Uh, so I ended up walking home from there in the fucking cold, miserable, drizzly rain. And there's quiet-ass streets. The only people out Drug dealers, drunks, teenagers at bars, and city buses. God, it's beautiful. God, it's beautiful. I love this fucking city. Coming from a city full of old, conservative people. I had an Uber driver when I mentioned I was from Seattle legitimately bring up that he wishes the National Guard would just shoot people on site for looting. That we've gotten too lenient. I didn't break it to him that I was one of those antifas he kept going on about, but that kind of set the tone, like, ah, mm-hmm, right. People want me dead here. Not like people don't like me here. People actively want to kill me here. God, I'm so glad to be back here. Right, like, for fuck's sake. It's, it's, it's insanely transphobic, it's insanely insanely homophobic it's insanely racist it's insanely bigoted and backward and just awful in every category there is no public transit it, it's pretty it's in the mountains it's real fucking pretty but it's expensive the workers aren't paid well but where are they pay, paid well my right comrades <laughs> it's just oh god god all the all the little ways you have to code shift all the little ways you have to change the way you flirt, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you act, the things you talk about, the things you don't talk about. The the person and human being you're allowed to be, you take it, you put it in a box, and you lock it. You lock it, you put it away, and you're like, haha, yes, it's a beautiful day today. I won't talk about anything I actually care about, because if I do, you'll pull over and fucking shoot me. Right, I just... Mm. Fuck Arizona. It's fucking... There are good people there. I actually had a great conversation with the owner of where we rented the suits from, and I won't say the name of the suit rental place, but uh, granted, I've already said the name of the city. It's a small city. He's great. He's great. The owner slash manager of that, great. He's was rallying on about... Because I got him going. Uh, about how his employees aren't paid well enough, but corporate won't let him pay them better. And I'm like, hell yeah, dude. You know, uh, you know a solution for that? Hmm. It just, uh... Maybe... Collectivize? Maybe worker co-op? Maybe union? Huh? Huh? You know, you got, <laughs> you got some labor management options here. So I, I got to, I got to, you know, fuss with some old people about how labor's coming back, baby. But I had the same number. I had three separate people when I was at the airport walking to the sidewalk question why I still had a mask on and say, you're in Arizona now. Yeah, you're in Arizona now. As if that was supposed to tell me something. Yeah, you fucks think you matter? You got Christian cinema. That... This is your god? Wait. <laughs> oh, god. Yeah, I, so... I'm incredibly grateful to have gone to the wedding. Um, he wonderfully moved by the wedding. God, I, I want to see so many of those people again. Is a big takeaway. I want to see them in a place where... I, I'm not deeply uncomfortable. Yeah, that that's really the bottom line. I wanted I want to be my best self around people, especially people that I know matter to people who matter to me and I I wasn't this weekend. I wasn't and I'm really saddened by that.
But, you know, it, it's an opportunity to do better. Why, why do we fall, Master Wayne? To die. Alfred to die. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, it's 2 a.m. Anything else I wanted to bitch about? I mean, probably not. This has been 40 minutes. Oh, Lord. I haven't been responding to chat, but hi. <laughs> I'm being very self-indulgent right now. The fact that I got home, got changed, and I'm like, I just want to talk into a microphone, not just scribble about this, because I've been bottling it up for a couple of days. So th thanks for letting me yell at the wall. That wall. That wall over there. The window, actually. Oh, God. The mute. The music at the wedding was uh, very Midwest, someone of my generation, and God, God, God bless the wife and her family, but or her friends, it, not not her family's choice. I think uh, sent me back to middle school in a bad way. <laughs> mm. Sometimes in a good way, but like, ooh, ooh, I don't. Know. I got anything else? We didn't finish the, uh, journaling. Journaling I've been doing. And this is the last thing I wrote. Okay, this is a good point to end on. I want to move and breathe like poetry. Smooth and soft. Pronounced with intent. I want to embody the tides, the river's flow, the wind's kiss. That's a vaguely positive note, huh? Vaguely positive. Mm, yeah, I'm not making an hour long thing out of this. Uh, notes? I don't know, dog. Like, I'll probably stream for real sometime this week. I have no idea what my sleep schedule is going to be like. I, video games don't sound fun. I have cabin fever, but I just got travel, done traveling to a red state, so I'm going to be here for at least a couple weeks. Make sure. Uh, okay, so my impression was it was a requirement to be vaccinated for the wedding. I heard no less than two people say, Ah! I decided not to get vaccinated until after the wedding because I didn't want to get sick and miss it. And nobody wore masks in Arizona. It's, yep, 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 yep. Ugh. I hope you get to leave work soon. Uh, it's like 2 in the morning. You're probably there for a while. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for keeping me company. Yeah, so, uh, fingers crossed, none of us get COVID for real. I mean, those of us who matter are vaccinated. Though that doesn't always matter. And there were some pretty fucking old people there. And, like... I just... The wanton selfishness of man knows no ends. In his ignorance, he kills the very thing he loves. It's, it's like, awfully poetic. Not getting vaccinated, going to a wedding, and then, like, running a high risk of being getting someone very sick or dead like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> but again i was trying not to pick fights this weekend so i didn't um man i i have this like burning sensation that there's something else you should see a doctor for that <laughs> um Uh, no. No. We talked about flying. Talked about Arizona being terrible. Denver sucks. Um, the airport. Never actually spent time in the city, but the airport is hell. Um, saw friends. Talked about that. Talked about feeling out of place and awkward and getting high-key triggered by where we were and turning into a less good... <laughs> Not my best self, um... Feeling like I could have done better. Still had a really good time. Still deeply moved. 
I think these are all the key points, right? Oh, God, I'm an asshole. Uh, I'll end on this story. I gave very bad directions to a kid on the light rail trying to get to the U District. Like I said, our the light rail stopped at the station because it was that time of night. It was at a bus stop or once right around the corner from the, the stadium station. And he's like, hey... You look like you live here. And I'm like, God damn it. I don't know why I get that. I guess that I do look like I live here. But people have been saying that since the day I moved here. Hey, you wear dark colors look vaguely gender nonconforming or at least queer and have a certain state of comfort around you. Or like not bothered by <laughs> it being dismal and beautiful, grungy and gorgeous. Anyway, nice kid was like, I'm trying to get to McMahon Hall, which is weird because that's the last name of my friend who got married. And that's, it's a small world after all. I gave him horrible directions. I should have told that kid to take a fucking cab. Instead, I'm like, take the E and the 45. He doesn't know what either of those things are. I would take in the 101 and it just pulled up. I'm like, but, but. <laughs> go out, kid, use Google Maps and just... It's like this poor, poor kid who had no idea where the fuck he was. <laughs> on the on the bus ride to, to downtown, I'm like, oh man, I I fucked up. I should have just paid for the kid to get an Uber. Like there were there were other U Dub like clearly like freshmen or sophomores there that were confused as to how they were getting home. I'm like. The, the right thing to do here would be to give them directions or pay for a cab and not just be like, tough shit, you little bastards. Maybe you should have thought of that. And, but I'm... Well, <laughs> we, we didn't walk down that path tonight. So here's to you, five random U-dub kids. Hope you got home safe. And, uh, well, if not, you get to wonder are beautiful city streets. It's safer than you think, kids. They were like, ooh, I don't want to be downtown at night. It's scary. Dog, I, the worst I saw were two gay couples being sassy at each other. That That's the sketchiest thing I saw on my walk through Belltown tonight. It was a very funny argument. But that's it. Anyway, I'm gonna take a shower and then fucking sleep hopefully for the first time in four days so thanks for hanging out i hope your night goes quickly and if you're watching on youtube after the fact hey weirdos i'll be back oh uh, i'd say tomorrow but later and until then i'm gonna say take care let's see oh no that oh i'm out of practice boo hiss bad streamer bad streamer how does it fucking go until then, I'm going to say, I'm not, wow, wow. There's a toodaloo in there. <laughs> nope, nope. All right, that's it, kids. Everybody go home. Nothing to see here. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here.